we have already seen that the real numbers are uncountable that makes them very difficult to compute with many times fortunately for all real world applications this uncountability is not such a big deal because you can always approximate a real number by rational numbers this phenomenon is known as density it'll be more clear what why it is called density uh, when we reach the chapter on topology where i make precise what density is but nevertheless the statement i am about to state the theorem i am about to state can be justifiably christened as density so theorem density of rationals and irrationals what this theorem says is the following let a comma b be two distinct real numbers then we can find a rational number rational number q in ab and an irrational number c in ab proof okay we will first construct we will first we will first find q okay now we can assume we can assume both a and b are irrational please pause the video and think about why we can make this assumption in this case hope you figured out that if both a and a either a or b is rational then you can just choose that to be the required rational number q okay further further we can assume we can assume both a comma b greater than 0 i leave it to you to check what would happen in the other possibilities for a and b i will just tackle this case it really makes no difference now let n not b the largest natural number natural number such that n not is strictly less than a okay in other words a is an element of the closed interval n not comma n not plus 1 okay now there are two possibilities if if b is greater than n not plus 1 then then n not plus 1 works okay because n not plus 1 is greater than or equal to a in fact it's got to be greater than a because we already assume that a is irrational and it's less than b so we have found a natural number that lies in between a and b so we are done so we can assume that b is not an element of n not comma n not plus 1 we can make this assumption okay now choose 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 m in the natural numbers such that 1 by m less than b minus a by 2 okay and let k b the largest number the largest number largest natural number again non negative is not just a non negative uh integer let me just make that precise non negative integer 
negative integer such that n0 plus k by m is less than a. So a lot of confusing things have happened. So let's draw a picture to make sense of what is going on. So we have the points a and b. We know that n0 is here. Okay. And under our hypothesis n0 plus 1 is here. Okay. n0 plus 1 exceeds b. Okay. Now what we have done is we have chosen uh, b minus a by 2. That's exactly half this length. That's exactly half this length. And then we are choosing a natural number so large that 1 by m, the size of 1 by m is lesser than less than half the size of uh, this interval a b. Okay. Then what we are doing is starting from n naught, we are first going through n naught plus 1 by m, then we are going to n naught plus 2 by m, so on and so forth. And we are finding the largest integer such that n naught plus k by m is less than a. Okay. There will always be such an integer simply because n naught is less than a. n naught plus 1 by m could exceed a in which case the choice of k would be just 0. Eventually when k exceeds m you get n naught plus 1 right when k is m you get n naught plus 1 which certainly exceeds a so at some integer it has to be the largest integer such that n naught plus k by m less than a there will always be such an integer okay now n naught we know that n naught plus k by m is less than a that means n naught plus k plus 1 by m will necessarily have to belong to a b okay why is this the case well because n naught plus k by m is less than a 1 by m is less than b minus a by 2 so adding b minus a by 2 to something less than a cannot exceed b simply because the length of the interval a b is b minus a and 1 by m is less than b minus a by 2 okay Clearly, this is a this is a rational number by construction. The trick of this proof is rather simple. By now, we are experts in trapping points in between some intervals. All we do is we trap the point A between n naught and n plus one, n naught plus one. Once having trapped that, what we did is we just essentially put a scale in between n naught and n plus one. Then made the rulings in the scale so small that we can literally mark off a point that lies in the interval a b. That's all we have done. Okay. Now what about the irrational case that is even simpler. We may assume we may assume that neither a or b is irrational. Neither a or b is irrational okay for the same reasons that we made as analogous assumption then c which is defined to be a plus b by root 2 works works okay why i leave it to you to check why this works it's rather straightforward so this concludes the lecture for this the lectures for this week we have seen quite a lot of properties of the real numbers next week we will begin sequences this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on density of rationals and irrationals